How's it going, everyone? Wenbo again. Today we are going to do another lighting tutorials in Blender. I'm super excited for today's topics because we are going to cover some really important lighting aspect of lighting and uh, in Blender. Either you are a 3D artist, illustrator, or graphic designer, or even a photographer, you really need to have a really good knowledge about lighting. Let's get it started. So first part we are going to talk about is called the quality of the light yeah in the photography world because I'm a photographer and we are referring quality of a light is re, re, when we're talking about the, the softness and the hardness of the shadow so that's called the quality of a light so and, and the, the definition of the quality of light is is defined by the relative light source to the sub subject the bigger of the light source right now is here the the softer light or shadow is going to be so if I'm just kind of uh, to to kind of making this light bigger I hit S so you can see here the shadows the edges of the shadows become uh, very soft and it's not really well defined if I'm gonna scale it down to make it uh, smaller the light source has become more harsh if I'm going to really like crank it up it's really super small you can see that the edge of the shadows become like sharp blades like like that so well that that's the majority of things that people know that yeah we all know that the soft uh, the quality and the softness and the hardness of the light and but uh, another thing uh, we i want to point it out for the definition of, of, of the quality of light is the, the relativity relativity is, is because when you sometimes when you, in the real world you are not that easy just changing the, the, the size of your light otherwise you have just purchasing a lot of different sizes of your light uh, modifiers you can change that it's not that easy to to change the light uh, resources uh, sizes for your subject uh, you know it, it, this is not impossible but what can you do what can you do in in the real world if you're photographing a, a subject that you want to make the light uh, the shadow a little bit softer what you can do you basically gonna change the relativity you know is is the relatively the the this the distance and the, the size is, is, is all relevant to the size of your product look at this light source uh, right now Based on the distance, this light source is relatively small. That's why we have a little bit harsh light, right? But if I move this light source to close, closer to the subject, the light quality is gonna change. So let's do that. So this is just a render view. We don't need to do anything. I'm just gonna move this one, kind of uh, close to the here a little bit. As you can see, the edges. Although yeah, the direction has changed a little bit. That, that's not our concern. We can we can change back the way it is. But you can see that the softness of the edge, it just changed. So it's all about relativity for, for when you think about the uh, the light source, the uh, the quality of light. Okay, so that is very important for a thing that I want to mention about the light quality for the first part. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the next part which is another thing that I'm super excited to to chat with, uh, with you guys is the is the uh, the inverse square law and this is the uh, image that I downloaded from the Google and that and it's well demonstrated what I'm trying to say inverse square law it sounds pretty boring nerdy and uh, it's like what, what, what are you trying to talk about and when we're talking about the inverse square law because we are talking about the light the strength the intensity of a light is going to fall off, right? If I'm turning, uh, uh, turn this into the render view, so you will see the lights. Uh, let's also turn off the subject first. When you see a light right here, it's just a really regular area light and trying to demonstrating uh, what a light works. And you see a back wall, right? The light, the strength of the intensity of a light is gonna fall off. But how much is going to fall off? That's something that we want to talk about. The inverse square laws explain this very well. You don't need to remember this uh, math. And you basically, what you need to do know is the distance increase one time, then uh, and two times, then the light intensity is going to fall off to the quarter. 
So basically, if you're increasing the same distance by twice, then the light intensity is gonna fall off to 25%. Uh, what does that mean? You know, what is like? Do I need to calculate that in the real life? And when you do that, no, you don't need to do that. But the 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 golden rule, take on home message is going to be the light is fall way quicker than you thought it will. Maybe this something will sound a little bit better and easier to understand. Because think about that when this chart, you know, same distance, like if we double it. 25 percent if double uh three times triple it and then that'll be like only 11 percent of light strength is fall so i can see that the first that when you're reaching to the end that part is pretty much almost gone right it's, but another thing that uh that i want to point it out once you know this light is going to fall off the strength of the light fall off pretty quickly and that's the what is basically inner square law it is but I, not, a lot of people don't understand how to use it. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to use it now. I put some subjects right here. So these are just regular um, perfume bottles that I made. Uh, and then as you can see here, the one is close to the light source. It's got definitely overexposed. And this one was okay on the side. This one's underexposed. But another thing I want to really point it out is that you can see here the from the chart, from this area, like from the uh, uh, four time to eight time, they're roughly about the, the same uh, brightness. I, I know it's a six six percent and two percent is it's a couple four percent, but it's not that much. Then that's significant. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you see these two bottles in here, they are illuminating evenly with the the strength of the uh, of the light. So what I mean is that a lot of people they're new they're they're they know oh soft light is better and this a bigger light is better yeah it is bigger light is better but if you without really understanding how to use that you 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 don't know why you need to put this light position in here and a lot of people thinking oh yeah I don't have a a bigger light to, to purchase in life or to use I just put the the subject close to the light source that I want to use so it become the, the the lights actually become softer yeah it, it does but if you have multiple items that you want to do put together of these two things you can I can I can X put them pretty close but as you can see here this is pretty close right this is relatively very close but you can see the brightness as it's quite different quite significantly and they are in the same different different this distance between each other but they're illuminating about the same intensity you get my point so my point is that so remember if you have a multiple items or multiple subject that you want illuminating entire scene and uh, what you can do you can, you need to put them a little further away from the light source in order to have an even luminate or strength of lighting on the subject in order to to make everybody uh, everything uh, lighted about the same and usually this is something happening when you taking a group pictures of people you know the, you, the people next to the light has become super bright and the people are farther away from the, uh, the, the light to become super dark you know you don't want people to have pretty light skin and we're uh, uh some people have dark uh, lighting so what you need to do when you're photographing a group of people then you're gonna use the light put it in further away although it's in here right everybody's standing in here in the distance wise they're pretty much evenly lit by the the intensity of a light uh, but what you need to do obviously from this distance the light intensity is not there so you need to do what you need to to change a bigger way bigger light like this and also bump up the intensity and in order to make this a group looks nice li evenly lit this is how you supposed to use and understand how invert square law works so two taking home message one the light intensity fall off way quicker than you thought it's gonna quickly drastically 
fall off. So, so don't put, if you want to have sub, several subjects to illuminating them as a group, put the light further away from them and then to illuminating them with a much stronger uh, uh, light with power and also if you still want to achieving the soft softness of the shadow or uh, then you need to do, do a bigger f face or big areas of that the light so in order to achieve that utilizing the light quality uh, if this sounds confusing to you take your time rewatch this video a couple of times you will understand that and also try to do that and we have a huge advantage when we're working with the light in the 3d world because we can easily change the light uh, uh, the lights uh, sizes and also the intensity in the real life man you're gonna spend so much money to pur purchasing all these professional light and um, you know the, 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 it just costs way too much to having one more stop of light and uh, on your strobes if you if you if you ever purchase any a studio light you want to know what i'm talking about okay cool now when we finish this one and the third thing i want to talk about it is the uh, feathered light so this is a, a techniques or uh, that uh, photographers often use to to demonstrating or to have actually have a much better uh a light light when you simply need positioning the light in the correct way and some people you already watch some videos or learning a basic lighting you know the side lighting is going to enhance the texture right it's going to enhance the textures in certain ways and 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 a lot of times when when you photograph a product and we are looking for a nice transitioning gradient of a light fall off to on the surface you know that's to, to achieve much better pleasant you know, uh, look of that so what i have done right now is i put this uh, product right here and i put a side light right here it's relatively big right as you can see here it's relatively big and square and if i'm if i'm looking from here from the front view it looks okay but i know there's a way i can make it much better without changing the size of a light without changing the uh, the the intensity of the light so by basically moving you see the center of the light is right here so basically moving this light a little bit f f uh, to the front to close in here so what i can do here just close it up turn this back on it just moved to here right and the light you know the light is going to fall off in the way that uh, creating a, a gradient we just I just showed you in the inverse square law earlier so as you can see here the light quality is much better you have to see there's a gradient coming out of here bright uh, bright part highlight and shadow it just makes this it looks much beautiful and more 3d dimensioned and it looks just better so I can do a quick switch up so this is what it was and in, in the center right here if I turn it off and I turn this one it's the feather the light as in the front as you can see here yeah it's much better uh, uh, pleasing for the eyes you can even using lies this method to kind of photograph people and when, when you're using a big soft box like this and basically that thing how it works is this the edge of this light hitting over here and also the light on this edge also hitting on here i mean it's just kind of fall off the entire intensity with a very natural way to kind of creating this beautiful gradient of your product uh, i really think uh, that these three uh, the key points that I, I mentioned in this tutorial is going to help you a lot when you understanding uh, when you're utilizing the light either in 3d or in the real photography studio you will actually have a much better result when you're using the light okay yeah thank you for watching and if you're really into uh, photorealistic product rendering please consider subscri subscribe my channel and uh, uh, I will sharing my works and also some tips about lighting uh, uh, modeling texturing everything uh, to rendering 3d images for products and if you also like to hang out on social media Instagram will be the best place to hang out 
All right. Thank you so much. And、uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.